Uh, I'm not sure if Estonia is a pioneer, but something where Estonia is a good example that it can have both security and democracy online. And this is illustrated by the fact that Estonia is um, an active participant in international discussions on internet freedom and founding member of the Freedom Online Coalition, as well as, as Estonia was uh, very high, um, came second after Iceland, I think, last year in the US think tank Freedom House reports, which analyzes rights and freedoms on, in public online space. Yet, Estonia also takes cybersecurity very seriously. And, for example, in the Global Cybersecurity Index, which is managed by the International Telecommunications Union. Estonia um, uh, was third in the world and first in the European Union back in 2021. So uh, this commitment to cyber capacity, um, but commitment to online freedom comes together. And this is where I think Estonia is a good example that you can have both. I think uh, from 2007 um, attacks, what the Estonian society learned at large was mm. that cybersecurity really is part of an overall security. You cannot have security in general without thinking and without understanding cybersecurity at the at the level of decision makers as well as at the level uh, of um, decision shapers or staffers that uh, that is something that was clearly understood and this understanding was illustrated by the fact that uh, ever since 2007 Estonia adopted its very first cybersecurity strategy it uh, started uh, a it, it decided, it clearly understood that you need to have a central agency responsible for cybersecurity with a clear mandate and also launch interagency cooperation. It's clear that malicious cyber attacks uh, and cyber activity in general has uh, substantially increased um, over the last three years, perhaps. First, uh, it was across COVID when the whole world, COVID pandemic, uh, when the whole world moved online and so did cybercrime. And then on top of that, uh, during the Russia's war in Ukraine where uh, we, uh, we have understood really that, uh, that uh, cyber is, uh, cyber attacks are not a separate front, but rather an extension of the conflict where Russia has invested a lot of resources into the scale and sophistication of its cyber weapons and uh, having used Ukraine as a testing ground really puts its uh, skills in practice. So the whole sort of current um, um, kinetic conflict or the war in Ukraine has also definitely uh, led to a, a disruption or chaos in Eastern European ransomware economy as uh, criminal ransomware cyber groups splinter, they take sides, we are seeing some groups disappear, new groups emerge, but one thing is certain, cyber attacks remain and they grow. The main challenge here is uh, that, uh, the, and a challenge that the transatlantic community as such faces is um, uh, that um, that a technology uh, uh, is to understand that there is a technology and norms battle uh, between uh, the uh, like-minded countries and countries like Russia and China on the other front. And both uh, Europe, uh, that is perhaps when you look at your question, EU, as well as NATO, uh, and that is US, Europe and other like-minded countries, they need to understand that we are on the same side of this battle and we should all band together rather than discuss uh, which side of the Atlantic uh, is in lead. We should stick together and jointly reassert, jointly uh, reassert leadership in international standard setting bodies such as the United Nations, the ITU, the International Telecommunications Union, and mutually develop and recognize each other's standards that relate to emerging technologies.
I think it does. It signals or the, some of the takeaways from this conflict include the understanding that, uh, that international law and attribution require more attention, that uh, there is um, much, much more intelligence sharing among like-minded nations. Um, this has been clear and this, uh, this is a lesson learned uh, from Ukraine that in sharing intelligence is playing a major role in this war. It builds coalitions and can shine a light on Russia's disinformation campaign. And the role of the private sector has really been crucial in this war. So, uh, so uh, a lot of these elements come together when um, necessitating more EU-NATO cooperation. 